welcome! In today's video, I'll be making a dirndl. The dirndl as we know it today evolved from 16th to 18th century folkwear that was worn in the German-speaking area of the Alps, most notably, as I said, Bavaria, which is a region in southern Germany, and Austria. For a more in-depth history of the dirndl, I highly recommend this video, which I will link, I believe, here or here. I forgot which side, but I recommend checking her video out. The dirndl as we know it today has transcended Bavaria and southern Germany throughout Germany and has transcended Germany and you can see it being worn in any area um, which German people of German heritage reside. And today in those places as well as Germany it is most often worn for Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is a celebratory event most notably for its pretzels, its beer, and its upa bands, and it's a very fun time. The origins of this festival is the marriage of Prince Ludwig of Bavaria to Princess Charissa von Saxe Hiedelburg Hausen, which happened on October 12, 1810, in the city of Munich. Prince Ludwig ordered festivals and horse races and parades to celebrate his new marriage. And those were the last week or so of September, ending the first weekend of October. I hope you enjoy! For my dirndl, I am using this thrifted drape. It has, it is this lovely olive green color and it has this basket weave, very nice and textured. And my pattern I am using is Folkwear 123 Austrian Dirndl. And I am going to, for my blouse, use this view here. And then use the darted bodice instead of the gourd bodice. And then I believe I'm, the skirt not that long and not that short, somewhere in the middle there. Here are my pattern pieces. I have a skirt panel here. My skirt panel is a little narrower than the, what the pattern over there called for because I wanted to take advantage of the pre-sewn hem on these curtains here. And so therefore my skirt panel is 80 inches instead of 90 inches wide. Then we have these two front pieces with two darts there. The back piece, I modification I made is that I made the neckline a um, scoop neckline instead of a V. I just found that more flattering. I liked it better. And this little piece was not in the pattern, but I added it. This trapezoid piece, which will get made, which will get made into a patch pocket later on. I'm going to go and serge these and mark the darts on those front pieces there. Here are my pieces surged. My skirt pieces got surged as well. And this curtain fabric is a little um, thin and uh, fidgety. And so I decided to back it with some um, cotton twill for stability. These are the front pieces here and then the back piece over there. The back piece doesn't have any darts, so that can be pushed aside right now. And the front pieces have my darts right there, so I will sew those darts up. Here is the dirndl bodice with the dark sewn in here. See the lining gave it a really nice structure. And in addition to sewing the darts in, I sewed these side seams. I've also decided to give additional structure and support to bone this bodice, and I am using twill tape here. I'm gonna bone the side seams. The front darts, the center back, and then what would be the side back if there would be a side back piece. Here are the boning channels sewn down by hand. And I have tails right here on the top of the boning channels because I'm going to insert the boning, which I'll be using synthetic whalebone for. Left over from one of my corset mock-ups over there. And then after I insert the boning, I will use these tails right here to sew up the top of these channels. Then I will be sewing the shoulder seams together. I have sewn all the boning channels and inserted the boning 
for which I use this synthetic whalebone. Here's a scrap of it that fell on the floor. It's very nice and springy. And then I also sewed the shoulder straps, shoulder seams together. The next step is to finish the armholes and the neckline with this bias tape. Here is my bodice. The neckline and the armhole have been um, covered with bias, finished with bias binding here. And what I did is that I clipped the curves on the neckline and the armhole, and then I um, snipped away most of the seam allowance so the bias binding can turn inwards more smoothly and there'll be less bulk. And then I ironed the bias binding upward and so I am ready to fold it under like so and then pin it and it'll be sewn by hand. The neckline and the uh, armholes are now sewn all down by hand here. And now I'm going to turn my attention to the skirt of the dirndl. Which I am going to, around the hem of the skirt, going to put rose and ruche. Rose ruching. The pattern comes with this lovely history of the dirndl as well as how to make all of these pretty trims. And so I am using a complementary color. I tried to use self-fabric trim, but my fabric is open weave and trying to turn that inside out just shredded it. So I'm using this complementary um, nice cotton sateen um, olive green. So what I'm doing in the hem of the skirt, the trim is going to be two inches wide. Along the neckline, it's going to be one inch wide. And so you need to cut your trim an inch wider than you want the finished width to be. So this, they start out as three inch strips, then I ch um, chalk mark half inch seam allowance, iron, and then they'll look like this after they are sewn. And then I will box plate them. Box plate's about maybe an inch wide. These are a little wider, but an inch, inch and a half wide, and then I'm going to sew them onto the skirt right on top of this line of stitching that's holding the pleats together. Then after, I'm going to go by hand and create the roses, which what you do is you have your box plate there, and then you pinch it together, and then you just do a couple stitches right there, and that's what creates the roses. Here is the Rosenrush trim. Like I said, I'm going to sew right along the line I sewed to attach the pleats together. Trim is much easier to sew when the garment is laying flat, and so I have not sewn up the center front seam, which is the only seam in this entire skirt. Right here, I'm only going to sew till that point there, because on the other side, See, this is going, because this right here is the seam allowance, so that's going to be obviously turned under, and then that's going to extend, and then um, that piece I just showed you is going to lap over it, and I'll just sew that part by hand, and so the trim will look continuous. So I'm going to go sew this. Here is the dirndl skirt. I have all the trim sewn on, and then the trim is also, the puff is sewn. I just tacked the center here of each of these pleats to create the trim effect that I wanted. Here is my skirt panel and my pocket. I just simply cut that trapezoidal shape earlier to be symmetrical and I put the two sides together and then I bagged it out and then I top stitched the top here and then here's my nice big old pocket. And I'm going to top stitch the pocket on. This will be, well first of all, the skirt is going to be gathered and this part is going to be hidden by the apron. And so you don't really see the pocket. And after I top stitch the pocket, then I will be gathering or pleating, haven't decided yet, the skirt to the 
bodice. I have my skirt all gathered here. I did two rows of gathering stitches. Um, the skirt I is in four sections and then each section got its own separate rows of gathering stitches just so I can gather each section individually and not have just like one entire long um, gathering thread and if it breaks I have to do it all over again. So then I also folded the bodice into quarters as well. The center front to the side seam, side seam to center back, center back to side seam, side seam to center front, which is this right here. Then I just gathered this down and pinned it. And then this is how it looks from the front side. And then I'm just going to do that for the rest of the skirt and bodice and then sew it by machine. Here is my dirndl bodice and skirt attached. Here you see the cool pocket. I need to trim that seam allowance. And here's the nice gather. The gathering is actually really nice, even though, like I said in the beginning, it's about 10 inches narrower than the pattern called for. I think it has a nice amount of volume here. And I already pulled the gathering threads that extended um, right here. You can kind of see the scarring, but that's okay. Past the seam allowance there. Then here's what the back looks like, all cool. And then the next step is to attach the closures. And I'm going to use this zipper. I should have gotten an invisible zipper. I just didn't think I was going to use a zipper when I was out purchasing them. And so I'm just going to attach the zipper right now. Probably do a left zipper. And then maybe like if I can really, if, it, if I can see the zipper and it bothers me, maybe like a hook and eye the top and the middle and the waist. Who knows? We'll see. Here is the zipper all basted in here. Basting the zipper is a little tedious, but it's worth it so you get to try it on without all the pins. And the zipper is exactly where it's supposed to be so the waist seam will line up and everything will line up properly. So I'm, what I'm going to, going to go do now is sew it by machine. And then the dirndl will be wearable. And then I'll just need to trim the neckline with the same trim that I trimmed the skirt with, the Ross and Rouge. I have sewed on the zipper and I've also sewn on the trim to the neckline. Now I said earlier that the neckline trim was going to be one inches and the um, bottom skirt trim was going to be one and a half, two inches, but I did the one inch trim. I sewed it all together and I attached it and it looks really dinky and stupid. And so I took it, off, took it off and I decided to do the same one and a half inch trim on the skirt that I'm gonna do right now on the bodice. And so here it is all, it's currently just pinned to the neckline here so you can see it. And then these wonder clips are just holding the little places where they're going to be tacked down. And then the after I sew it and then do all the tacking, I am going to finish these two edges right here separately. And then they're just going to fold over and hook and eye or snap. I've decided yet over the zipper to hide that joint. And after that, the dirndl will be done. Here is what I'm using for the apron of the dirndl. It is this lovely lace tablecloth. Has this lovely pattern and a lovely insertion border. And what I did is that I cut the tablecloth in half. So the tablecloth was this length times two and I cut it in half. And that's actually the perfect length for an uh, apron for my dirndl. And I was able to save the lace pattern as well as the already nicely finished edge of the tablecloth. What I did is that one panel isn't wide enough for the apron. And so what I did is that I cut a half an inch away from this insertion point on either side. And then I am going to seam these panels together like so. And so it'll look like that. And these ties that I cut off, see they have a little bit of the lace 
insertion work on them, I am going to use for the apron ties. These might not be long enough. I might have to and, uh, cut a length of white muslin um, in between those two ties, but I wanted to use them because they had the pretty lace insertion work right here at the end. Here are the two sides of the journal apron now seamed together. And what I'm doing is that there is raw edges on either side of the seam. And so I'm turning them under and then sewing them by hand. So then once the two sides are sewn, are finished, I should say, then they'll look like that. You'll still see it because this cotton is on the thinner side, but it will be nice and uniform. So I took out the apron tie pattern piece and so it's cut three and then I measured the length of the tie and I actually it's 25 inches and totally I lucked out the, these two borders from the apron are 25 inches and so therefore I just needed to cut one more which will be the center piece that the apron over there will attach to and I just cut this from some muslin and because this muslin, like the cotton of the tablecloth, is thin and I don't want it to bunch up when I'm wearing the apron, I cut a piece of interfacing. This is a um, color interfacing. The length of what the apron will get gathered down to. And so this, what I'm going to do is put in the middle of the, this center waistband here. And then I'll iron that on. Here is the dirndl apron gathered and sewn to the apron ties. Here's how it looks from the front. And so what I'm doing now is that I am, the ties are right sides together and I am sewing them all the way to the ends here. And so then I will turn the ties inside out and so the only edge I'll need to finish by hand is this edge right here where the apron attaches to the ties. Here are my apron ties, all sewn by machine here. And then we have a little end with the lace on it. And the actual apron has previously been gathered and sewed to the skirt. That's the front side, this is the back. And the part that the ties, part of the ties that was not sewn by machine, has been turned under and ironed, and then this will be sewn down by hand, and then the apron will be done. The apron is done. Here is the attachment point, all done by hand, and I'm going to show it to you in the mirror. Here is how the apron looks now that it's completed. A little gripe I have, is that the bow here is a little puny. Um, it looks cute, it's okay with the rest of the apron, but I would like if the ties were longer and I could make a um, bigger bow like with tails. I'll undo it so you can see the difference here. See this piece here, because it has to wrap around my front, is basically is twice as long as the piece next to it. So it's kind of hard to tie the bow. You have to fiddle with it a little bit, but overall it's a really cute apron. Now that the dirndl is done and the apron is done, I am working on the dirndl blouse. Dirndl blouses are this interesting cropped length. They're designed to be worn underneath the low neckline of the dirndl. And I am using for my blouse this lovely drapey white on white stripe cotton sheet that I got at Goodwill. Here are my pieces cut out. I have the sleeve here. I did shorten the sleeve by about two inches, um, one inch here. I might shorten it a little more once I get it on. I'll just have to see. Then I have the back piece and the 
front piece. Now the back piece, I did adjust the neckline to a scoop neck instead of a v-neck because I adjusted the dirndl to a scoop neck in the back as well because I just liked it better. So I am going to serge the sides of the these pieces that need serging and then I will start assembly. Here are my pieces all serge. Here are the sleeves, the back piece, and the front piece. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seam the front and back pieces together at the side seam and the shoulder seam. I have seamed the front and back pieces together and I decided to do French seams just to be different. So I sewed the seams, the pieces, right sides together and they looked like this. Then I ironed them open and they looked like this. And then I trim them and they look like this. And then you sew, you put them so that they are right sides together again. And you sew the seam. This is from the right side of the fabric. And then the seam will look like this. And so all the raw edges are encased in that seam there. So I'm go going to go finish up the other three seams here. And then the front and back, well, the bottom, the blouse itself, the body of it will be done. And I just need to turn under the top edge, neckline, and the bottom edge for elastic or ribbon. And then I'll have to work on the sleeves. Now the pattern wanted me to do something different for the neckline and the bottom of the blouse, but I am just marking half an inch away from the bottom and the top with a friction pen here. And then I am going to iron this, turn it under and stitch there. Then I will insert some one eighth of an inch ribbon. And then into those channels to gather them up. So I'm going to go iron those channels now. Here are the channels sewn and the ties inserted. Here you can just see the stitching on these channels here. I did it by machine. And then at the center front at the top and the center front at the bottom here, I just tied the 1 8 inch tool tape into bows. And so this is how the bodice looks. I keep calling it a bodice. The blouse looks right now. And then the channel just gather up the neckline and the bottom right here. The blouse is designed to sit right under the bust like it is doing on the dress form. So now I have to tackle sleeves. The first thing I have to do with the sleeves is give them a quick hem. Again, half inch hem marked with my friction pen. And I'm going to do the hem before I sew up the seam of the sleeve. I Normally you would do it after, but I don't care if there's a break in the hem there. It's easier to do it flat anyway. So I'm gonna go hem the sleeves. My sleeves are now hemmed. And the next step here is to add a casing three inches away from the hem of the sleeve and then sew it on. I just use, this is about an inch wide bias tape I use made out of self fabric. And then that's sewn on. And I'm going to put elastic through this and then it's going to smoosh up like this on the arm. And then so this part will basically be on my elbow really. And they'll have this ruffle hanging down from that point. And then after these bands are sewn on, I'll put the elastic through, secure the elastic on uh, both sides of these um, side seam. So the side seam. Then the last step will be to attach the sleeves to the rest of the blouse. Here is one sleeve that has the elastic sewn in, sewn in, I should say, pinned in. And all I did is I measured um, my bicep um, and then that was the measurement that I did the elastic at. And then the elastic is pinned right here so it won't disappear in the channels. And then I'm going to do is seam up this 
underarm seam here, and then back stitch a couple of times over the elastic to make sure that it is in place. And then it's attaching time. And here is the finished journal blouse. I sewed on these sleeves. You can see it here, my puffy sleeves. And at the top here, I just did a little bit of pleating to ease that excess fabric into the arm side. And these, how, these are how the sleeves look from the back. Obviously, they look nice and poofy with actually something inside of it. And from the front. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And as always, any accessories I'll be wearing in the reveal will be linked below.